September 16. Later Opposition Under King Artaxerxes Even later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, the enemies of Judah, led by Bishlam, Mithridath, and Tabiel, sent a letter to Artaxerxes in the Aramaic language, and it was translated for the king. Rehum the governor and Shimshai the court secretary wrote the letter, telling King Artaxerxes about the situation in Jerusalem. They greeted the king for all their colleagues, the judges and local leaders, the people of Tarpel, the Persians, the Babylonians, and the people of Erech and Susa, that is, Elam. They also sent greetings from the rest of the people whom the great and noble Ashurbanipal had deported and relocated in Samaria and throughout the neighboring lands of the province west of the Euphrates River. This is a copy of their letter. To King Artaxerxes from your loyal subjects in the province west of the Euphrates River, The king should know that the Jews who came here to Jerusalem from Babylon are rebuilding this rebellious and evil city. They have already laid the foundation and will soon finish its walls. And the king should know that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, it will be much to your disadvantage, for the Jews will then refuse to pay their tribute, customs, and tolls to you. Since we are your loyal subjects and do not want to see the king dishonored in this way, we have sent the king this information. We suggest that a search be made in your ancestors' records, where you will discover what a rebellious city this has been in the past. In fact, it was destroyed because of its long and troublesome history of revolt against the kings and countries who controlled it. We declare to the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the province west of the Euphrates River will be lost to you. Then King Artaxerxes sent this reply. To Rehum the governor, Shimshai the court secretary, and their colleagues living in Samaria and throughout the province west of the Euphrates River. Greetings. The letter you sent has been translated and read to me. I ordered a search of the records and have found that Jerusalem has indeed been a hotbed of insurrection against many kings. In fact, rebellion and revolt are normal there. Powerful kings have ruled over Jerusalem and the entire province west of the Euphrates River, receiving tribute, customs, and tolls. Therefore, issue orders to have these men stop their work. That city must not be rebuilt except at my express command. Be diligent and don't neglect this matter, for we must not permit the situation to harm the king's interests. When this letter from King Artaxerxes was read to Rehum, Shimshai, and their colleagues, they hurried to Jerusalem. Then, with a show of strength, they forced the Jews to stop building. Ezra arrives in Jerusalem. Many years later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, there was a man named Ezra. He was the son of Sireah, son of Azariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Ahitub, son of Amariah, son of Azariah, son of Mireath, son of Zeraiah, son of Uzai, son of Bukai, son of Abishua, son of Phinehas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the high priest. This Ezra was a scribe who was well versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given to the people of Israel. He came up to Jerusalem from Babylon, and the king gave him everything he asked for, because the gracious hand of the Lord his God was on him. Some of the people of Israel, as well as some of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants, traveled up to Jerusalem with him in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes' reign. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in August of that year. He had arranged to leave Babylon on April 8, the first day of the new year and he arrived at Jerusalem on August 4, for the gracious hand of his God was on him. This was because Ezra had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and to teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. Artaxerxes' Letter to Ezra King Artaxerxes had given a copy of the following letter to Ezra, the priest and scribe who studied and taught the commands and decrees of the Lord to Israel. From Artaxerxes, the king of kings, to Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law of the God of heaven. Greetings. I decree that any of the people of Israel in my kingdom, including the priests and Levites, may volunteer to return to Jerusalem with you. I and my council of seven hereby instruct you to conduct an inquiry into the situation in Judah and Jerusalem, based on your God's law which is in your hand. 
We also commission you to take with you silver and gold, which we are freely presenting as an offering to the God of Israel who lives in Jerusalem. Furthermore, you are to take any silver and gold that you may obtain from the province of Babylon, as well as the voluntary offerings of the people and the priests that are presented for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. These donations are to be used specifically for the purchase of bulls, rams, male lambs, and the appropriate grain offerings and liquid offerings, all of which will be offered on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem. Any silver and gold that is left over may be used in whatever way you and your colleagues feel is the will of your God. But as for the cups we are entrusting to you for the service of the temple of your God, deliver them all to the God of Jerusalem. If you need anything else for your God's temple, or for any similar needs, you may take it from the royal treasury. I, Artaxerxes the king, hereby send this decree to all the treasurers in the province west of the Euphrates River. You are to give Ezra the priest and teacher of the law of the God of heaven whatever he requests of you. You are to give him up to 7,500 pounds of silver, 500 bushels of wheat, 550 gallons of wine, 550 gallons of olive oil, and an unlimited supply of salt. Be careful to provide whatever the God of heaven demands for his temple. For why should we risk bringing God's anger against the realm of the king and his sons? I also decree that no priest, Levite, singer, gatekeeper, temple servant, or other worker in this temple of God will be required to pay tribute, customs, or tolls of any kind. And you, Ezra, are to use the wisdom your God has given you to appoint magistrates and judges who know your God's laws to govern all the people in the province west of the Euphrates River. Teach the law to anyone who does not know it. Anyone who refuses to obey the law of your God and the law of the king will be punished immediately, either by death, banishment, confiscation of goods, or imprisonment. Ezra Praises the Lord Praise the Lord, the God of our ancestors, who made the king want to beautify the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, and praise him for demonstrating such unfailing love to me by honoring me before the king, his council, and all his mighty nobles. I felt encouraged because the gracious hand of the Lord my God was on me, and I gathered some of the leaders of Israel to return with me to Jerusalem. Exiles Who Returned with Ezra Here is a list of the family leaders and the genealogies of those who came with me from Babylon during the reign of King Artaxerxes. From the family of Phinehas, Gershom. From the family of Ithamar, Daniel. From the family of David, Hattush, a descendant of Shechaniah. From the family of Perosh, Zechariah, and 150 other men were registered. From the family of Pehath-Moab, Elioenai, son of Zerahiah, and 200 other men. From the family of Zatu, Shechaniah, son of Jehaziel, and three hundred other men. From the family of Aden, Ebed, son of Jonathan, and fifty other men. From the family of Elam, Jeshahiah, son of Athaliah, and seventy other men. From the family of Shephatiah, Zebediah, son of Michael, and eighty other men. From the family of Joab, Obadiah, son of Jehiel, and two hundred and eighteen other men. From the family of Bani, Shelemith, son of Josephiah, and 160 other men. From the family of Bibi, Zechariah, son of Bibi, and 28 other men. From the family of Asgad, Johanan, son of Hakatan, and 110 other men. From the family of Adonakam, who came later, Eliphalet, Jewel, Shemaiah, and 60 other men. From the family of Bigvai, Uthai, Zakur, and 70 other men. Ezra's Journey to Jerusalem I assembled the exiles at the Ahava Canal, and we camped there for three days while I went over the lists of the people and the priests who had arrived. I found that not one Levite had volunteered to come along. So I sent for Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, Elnathan, Jerob, Elnathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Meshulam, who were leaders of the people. I also sent for Joyrib and Elnathan, who were men of discernment. I sent them to Iddo, the leader of the Levites at Kisiphia, to ask him and his relatives and the temple servants to send us ministers for the temple of God at Jerusalem. Since the gracious hand of our God was on us, they sent us a man named Sherebiah, along with eighteen of his sons and brothers. He was a very astute man and a descendant of Malhi, 
who was a descendant of Levi, son of Israel. They also sent Hashabiah, together with Jesheah, from the descendants of Merari, and twenty of his sons and brothers, and two hundred and twenty temple servants. The temple servants were assistants to the Levites, a group of temple workers first instituted by King David and his officials. They were all listed by name. And there, by the Ahava Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before our God. We prayed that he would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children, and our goods as we traveled. For I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from enemies along the way. After all, we had told the king, Our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him, but his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us. And he heard our prayer. I appointed twelve leaders of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten other priests, to be in charge of transporting the silver, the gold, the gold bowls, and the other items that the king, his council, his officials, and all the people of Israel had presented for the temple of God. I weighed the treasure as I gave it to them and found the totals to be as follows. Twenty-four tons of silver— 7,500 pounds of silver articles, 7,500 pounds of gold, 20 gold bowls, equal in value to 1,000 gold coins, two fine articles of polished bronze, as precious as gold. And I said to these priests, You and these treasures have been set apart as holy to the Lord. The silver and gold is a voluntary offering to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. Guard these treasures well until you present them to the leading priests, the Levites, and the leaders of Israel, who will weigh them at the storerooms of the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. So the priests and the Levites accepted the task of transporting these treasures of silver and gold to the temple of our God in Jerusalem. We broke camp at the Ahava Canal on April 19 and started off to Jerusalem. And the gracious hand of our God protected us and saved us from enemies and bandits along the way. So we arrived safely in Jerusalem where we rested for three days. On the fourth day after our arrival, the silver, gold, and other valuables were weighed at the temple of our God and entrusted to Merimoth, son of Uriah the priest, and to Eliezer, son of Phinehas, along with Jazabad, son of Jeshua, and Noadiah, son of Benui, both of whom were Levites. Everything was accounted for by number and weight, and the total weight was officially recorded. Then the exiles who had come out of captivity sacrificed burnt offerings to the God of Israel. They presented twelve bulls for all the people of Israel, as well as ninety-six rams and seventy-seven male lambs. They also offered twelve male goats as a sin offering. All this was given as a burnt offering to the Lord. The king's decrees were delivered to his highest officers and the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, who then cooperated by supporting the people and the temple of God.